Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is episode two of my Home on a Budget series and we are going to be talking paint. So if you watched the last episode, we talked about lighting and some choices you could make, affordable ones, to kind of make your home your own. And this episode, I'm just going to go over my paint choices. Um, I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks that I use when cutting in because that's everybody's least favorite part of painting. And then I'm going to tell you guys some secrets and things that I've done to kind of like make my home a little bit more personal. So I'm going to talk about my paint colors. I was going to hold up paint cards, but I think that the lighting might mess them up. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to insert a little picture straight from Home Depot's website. And I promise you guys, I am not sponsored by Home Depot or anything, because um, I know my lighting episode was like basically Home Depot. And now that I look at my paint, that's all Home Depot as well. Um, but it's just that I like them. They're easily accessible, and it's really good quality for the price. So let me just get started. I've used a lot of the same colors over and over again. And I'm going to start with the colors that I have in my living room and dining room. I use the same color in each of those and the name of that color is Glidden Wood Smoke and I'll go ahead and put the picture in now and this I used in a flat finish um, in rooms like living room, dining room, bedroom you want to use things like a flat finish um, other rooms you go a little bit glossier like uh, the bathroom I did either eggshell or whatever the step up from that is because it's easier to wipe down and clean and that room gets a lot more humidity and moisture um, but in a room like a living room, the flat kind of absorbs the light and just kind of, it has like a neat glow to it. Um, so yeah, I wanted to use a gray. And grays can be hard a lot of times because if you pick too cool of a gray, it pulls purple. And if you go too warm, you can get, you know, another effect. So I feel like the wood smoke, it's like a true gray. It leans a tiny bit sage in the right lights but it adapts really well in all different lights. It's kind of got like its own personality. So that's why I picked that one and I really love it. It looks good with a crisp white trim too. Um, and then the color I put in my bedroom, I actually liked it so much that I put it in the kitchen too. So you can see I'm in the bedroom now. And this is a light blue that's almost white when the sun shines on it just right. And the name of this one is Glidden Blue Cloud. And I'll go ahead and insert that now too. And blue is another color that I think is kind of tricky sometimes. Um, if you go like too deep of like a pale blue, I feel sometimes it almost feels like hospital-like and sterile. So you've got to kind of, you know, try things out and see what's going to work. Um, and I'll get into that more in the tips and tricks of something that I've learned that I do. Um, the other paint color I have used inside my house in the bathroom, I went a little more bold in there because I felt like if you're going to do it, that's the room to do it in. So in that room I used Bare and I used the color called Blue Willow. You'll notice most of my other colors, they're all Glidden, which is like the low end brand at Home Depot, but for me that one works great. I do two coats and it always covers well. So this is the only one where I stepped up to the Bare brand and what I do when I go into a room for paint, I kind of have a feeling of what I want the room to be like. So for the bathroom, my vision was this. Um, ever since I was a little kid, I've been vacationing at Lake Ontario during the summers. And there's like this moment before a thunderstorm comes in off the lake, and they always seem to be like huge off the lake. Um, so the sky just gets this dark, moody, blue-gray, and it's just like... That's the color I wanted to capture. So I did a lot of like uh, looking around at different paint samples, taping them on the walls, looking at them at different times of day. And Blue Willow is the one that I decided on. And then just a few other colors that I've used around the house on smaller things, um, like outside on the porch. Instead of going with standard gray on the floor, because I know that there's a pre-mixed porch paint that comes in gray, I wanted to do something a little bit more personal. So for that, I picked Glidden Olive Wood, and it's like a grayish green, but it looks really good. It doesn't show a lot of dirt. I'll insert that as well. And obviously, because it's on the ground, I picked it in a floor slash porch formula. And then also, my outside doors, I painted them both in uh, Glidden French Country Blue. 
And I had known I liked this color because I used it in a kitchen in a previous house. So I went ahead and put it on the front door and the back door, just the outside part. So those are the colors I used. Now I'm going to tell you guys about some of the things, the products that I like to use when I'm cutting in because that is the worst part for me and I think probably a lot of other people in painting. Um, so I've got a couple of my favorite things here and I'm just going to show you. First I'm going to start off with this little tool which is really simple. Um, it's a paint can opener and I know you can do it with a screwdriver but this thing really makes it easy and they're so cheap. Um, so I have a couple on hand and I just keep one upstairs and one downstairs, that way they're like wherever I need them. Um, totally optional, you don't need it, but it just makes things easier. So now when I'm cutting in, I hardly ever tape. I think maybe I've taped like once in my life. Um, if you're going to tape, make sure you smooth it down really good. A lot of people say use like a credit card or something. And then the trick with the tape is to peel it off while it's still wet. Because um, if you let it dry on there, there's a good chance you're going to peel stuff off. So while the paint is still wet, you have to peel the tape off. Um, but for me, I just like to cut in. So a lot of times I'll freehand it. And if I do, I have this brush that I like. And this one's a Wooster Pro. You don't have to go with this brand. It's just the fact that it's small and it's angled. And I do find that like if you hold it up here, you don't get a lot of control. I always end up holding it like right down here. Um, and it's really easy to just cut in because it's small. You only put paint up the white part while you're cutting it in. You don't want it like dripping all down the brush. Um, now another thing that I use on a lot of the baseboards and door trim is this. And this is just like a metal straight edge. You just press it against the wall and then the brush just goes like straight along top of it. This made a lot of the trim work a lot easier. One word of caution is this metal blade is sharp um, when you're cleaning it. Just be careful of that. I learned that the hard way. And then another thing is, um, I know it's like a cheat, but when I'm painting like windows, I know my back door had a bunch of panes on the window, and I never take that off. I just paint them, and then it always comes off at the end with a razor. You can easily scrape it off. So those are my tools. Now I'm going to tell you guys some of the maybe weird tips I've used. So my first tip is to consider painting your ceiling. Um, now in rooms with the crown molding, like my living room or my dining room, I did this traditional flat white. Rooms like the bedroom and the kitchen, because I don't have crown molding, which you can see behind me, um, and I don't know if I'm putting it in or not, I painted the ceiling the same color as I painted the walls because it's such a light color. It almost pulls white. But to me, there's not like that separation between the ceiling and wall right now. So it makes the room seem taller. It makes it seem more airy. So that's something I've done. It can also work in the reverse. Um, in an old house I had, I made kind of like a poker room slash den type thing. And I used a sage green color in there. It wasn't super dark. It was very similar to what I have in the living room. But I was kind of thinking like, you know, let's see what happens. I want the room to feel kind of like like a speakeasy, you know, you want to walk in and have it be like loungy and comfortable and like laid back. And I went ahead and painted the ceiling sage, same as the walls, and it really worked in there too. So I mean, maybe in a room like a library, that's something you could consider. Um, another thing is when you're picking your colors, you have to kind of consider how your floor plan is. Now I have a lot of wide cased openings, which is what I love. But if you have a completely open floor plan, obviously a lot of your rooms are going to have to be one color because you're not going to want lines breaking things up. So you have to consider that. You also have to consider how much of rooms you see from another room because they have to easily transition. If you do like a room super dark and then go light and then dark again, it's going to look choppy. Kind of like if you did hardwood floors and you made them all different throughout. It's, it's something that stops your eye and it kind of makes the house not flow. So that's something to consider. Um, Another thing that I have learned is that if you can't finish the entire room, um, it's best to like finish the wall you're on because paint color, I know that everyone's heard it can vary from gallon to gallon, but I also read that it can vary depending on the temperature or the humidity of the day you paint it. Um, so say you're going to run out, just finish the wall you're on if you can. Um, because it, it's a lot easier to see like that mark down a wall than it is in the corner. So that's something else I do. And then another thing I've learned 
is it's okay to make mistakes. Um, back to that whole light blue issue. I have picked a light blue that I hated. Um, it turned out I felt like I was in a doctor's office and it was just the worst thing. But what I make myself do is I try and live with the color for at least a week, two if I can. Because um, sometimes you'll paint something and it's just the difference of it you kind of like wonder. Um, so by waiting a week you find out whether your eye really doesn't like it or whether it's just getting used to something different. So that's something else I do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, next video is going to be talking about rugs. Uh, the next home on a budget video anyways. In between there I'm going to stick a Goodwill Outlet haul because I am planning a trip to the Goodwill Outlet. So hopefully I have some good luck and I've got a great big haul of that for you guys. But once again, thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed.